Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk today. My name is Paul Johnson. I work in strong correlation and I work in the chemistry department of Université Laval in Quebec City. In particular, our approach is to use wave functions from exactly solvable models as a starting point for strongly correlated systems, in much the same way as you would use r foc as a starting point for weakly correlated systems. So in the long term, we want to be able to predict the behavior of complicated systems that are not treatable by r foc plus correction. As an example, we consider this manganese acetate cluster where there are many electrons, a large spin due to coupling between two different behaviors of the green centers and the blue centers. There are many effects due to antiferromagnetic coupling. And because there are many electrons and there's lots of near degeneracy, there are many, many, many thermally accessible states that are important. But that's just one example. There are many more complicated examples involving heavy, heavier elements including uranium and neptunium. And to predict the behavior, we will need to be able to solve a very difficult electronic structure problem. We will need to account for effects of special relativity due to the heavier atoms. And we will need to do all this at a finite temperature to observe a finite temperature transition, of course. So this is a long-term goal. And in my mind, a long-term goal is perhaps in my lifetime, but we'll see. I don't know how long-term that is. And for the near term, we're going to focus on solving strongly correlated electronic structure problem. Now, that is already a big step, but in the near term, we can make progress. And in the midterm, maybe it can be solved. So what do we mean by a strong and weak correlation? I understand that not everyone defines it in the same way. So we'll just uh, briefly describe the way we think about it. So weak correlation is anything that's described well by one molecular orbital diagram plus small corrections. So if hartree fock is the correct qualitative picture of what is happening physically, you are a weakly correlated system. The homolumo gap is large compared with the electronic propulsion of the valence electrons. For molecules, there is one molecular orbital diagram that is important. Strong correlation encompasses systems in which there is a bond stretch or a bond break which is you know, many systems in chemistry, any reaction really, whenever the motion of electrons is rigidly coupled, when you need many different molecular orbital diagrams to describe what is happening qualitatively, when the homolumo gap is small compared with the, balance, uh, the electronic propulsion of the valence electrons, in example, the Mott insulator, or any system where you feel the need to ask the question, how many bonds are present? If you have to ask that question, generally, it's a good indication that you are a strongly correlated system. And the common theme is any system that is not well described by one molecular orbital diagram, r 2 fox later determined. So the way we solve any problem in physics, really, is we start from a solution of a system that is easy, and we systematically correct it until we get the desired accuracy. This approach will only really work if you start from a good enough starting point, something that is qualitatively reasonable. Otherwise, there is no reason to believe that it will converge or even provide anything reasonable at all. For weakly correlated systems, hartree fock is a good first approximation, and then you can systematically correct it with the excited states from hartree fock other slated determinants. So we want to do the same thing for strong correlation. Is it possible to define a reference for the, for strongly correlated systems such that we can write a short expansion. A lot of groups have been thinking about this for a long time. And one of the common themes is to think in terms of weakly correlated pairs rather than, to, rather than weakly correlated electrons. So Gustavo Scuseria, who is an invited speaker in the session, will be describing a wave function from identical pairs, anti-symmetrized terminal power wave functions. Our approach is similar in that it's weakly correlated pairs. These weakly correlated pairs will, however, come from exactly solvable model that we can understand physically, and then we can build systematic corrections on top. That is the point today. So weakly correlated pairs is an approximation. Uh, there will necessarily be pieces of the wave function that are entirely neglected from unpaired electrons. As a result, only terms that have seniority zero or fully paired uh, Slater determinants will contribute in the wave function. We will necessarily be approximating the full CI in that space, which is called DOCI, in which all the diagrams are fully paired. 
So all the diagrams are of the type omega equals zero on the left. All of the electrons are in pairs. This is the dominant, dominant. Scuseria and his coworkers have shown that if you look at seniority as a quantum number in your CI vector, the most important ones are seniority zero, then seniority two, then seniority four, et cetera. So already starting at seniority zero for systems for which it's not a symmetry is a reasonable starting point and will move further in the future. So anything that is a weakly correlated product of pairs will have DOCI as the best possible case. As a result, we will compare our results to DOCI. Okay, so let's look briefly at how we build geminals. For individual electrons, we have second quantized operators creating and removing orbitals. These, there's two sets of objects, A daggers, which create, and A, uh, A's that remove. They have simple anti-commutation relations that are just chronic reductants. There are two types of objects. For pairs, it's only marginally more difficult. You have three objects instead of two. You have S plus, which builds a pair. You have S minus that removes a pair. You have SZ that counts the number of pairs. S plus, S minus, and SZ have very easy commutation relations that you will recognize from a quantum mechanics course. This extends very easily to any number of sites. The only difference being that your commutation relations are decorated with a chronic delta. SI plus creates a pair in site I, SI minus removes a pair from site I, and SIZ counts the number of pairs in site I. And the structure is very easy. So with those, we can build geminals. And in particular, we can build geminal products or geminal mean field wave functions. There are many different kinds of geminals, and we'll just look at them briefly. The simplest is just restricted Hartree-Fock in which each geminal is just one pair, easy. AGP is a geminal product in which each geminal is identical, and that is a variationally feasible wave function as shown by many different groups over the years, in particular Coleman and recently Scuseri. Riches and Godin pairs are similar. They are geminals that are par parametrized by two sets of numbers that are related through a set of nonlinear equations as we will see. This is also a variationally, variationally feasible wave function. The most general type of geminal is a pig, which is just arbitrary coefficients in your geminal. And unfortunately, this is not a feasible variational wave function, so we won't talk about it very much. So if you structure your geminal, you'll, there are many different cases. AGP and RG states are both variationally feasible. There's another type of geminal which you can build by restricting the uh, the sites that contribute to each geminal. So GVB or a perfect pairing is an example where each geminal has one occupied and one virtual. APSG is a geminal where each geminal has disjoint set of sites. And finally, AP1 rog or pair couple cluster doubles is a geminal in which there is one occupied and then contributions from all the virtuals. So AP1 rog or PCCD is not variationally, variationally feasible but you can solve it in a projected manner if the wave function is restricted Hartree-Fock plus pairs. In that case, it is pretty much the exact answer. It is also pretty much exact if the wave function is GVB. So in those two cases, AP1 rog and pair couple cluster doubles have already been shown to be a very good treatment of at least the energy. The properties, maybe not because it's projected, but at least the energy is very good. So we're gonna think about RG states. And I'll show you briefly what they are. They are eigenvectors of a specific Hamiltonian that is of a BCS type where the interaction is a constant. So there's competition between filling up of the lowest sites and of scattering between each of the sites. So you can show very easily in a few lines that if you build a, a state that is a product of RG pairs, which is this uh, U ket here, and you act with this Hamiltonian on that state, you will get one term that is proportional to that state and a lot of linearly independent garbage. So as long as the garbage disappears numerically, you have an eigenvector of the Hamiltonian. Now that is exactly the structure of what is called a beta ansatz wave function. So provided the linearly independent garbage disappears, uh, you have an eigenvector, which happens if these nonlinear equations are satisfied. So epsilon and G uh, define the Hamiltonian and then U's define the states. You have to solve the set of nonlinear equations for each set of U's. 
And each uh, eigenvector of this Hamiltonian is defined by a different set of u's. So in general, nonlinear equations are tricky, but these sets have very effective numerical algorithms, and it is easy to compute all of their solutions fairly easily. The scaling is sublinear even. So I would say that this problem is solved. You can compute all the eigenvectors of this Hamiltonian fairly easily. Once you have that, you will need to construct its density matrix, specifically, specifically its one and two body density matrices. And you do that with some uh, results that are very clean. The scalar product between any two RG state eigenvectors is just a determinant scaled by a factor. Its norm you get by the limit as the two sets of numbers are the same. It becomes the determinant of a specific matrix that has a physical interpretation. The one RDM, one RDM elements are very clean. You get them from a sum of ratios of determinants that differ by a single column, which you compute very simply by solving a set of nonlinear, uh, sorry, by solving a set of linear equations. With that same solution, you get all the two RDM elements in terms of the same primitives. So it is very easy and straightforward to compute the one and two RDM elements by solving a set of linear equations. Thus, the bottleneck to evaluate the energy with this wave function is linear algebra operations. That is generally a good sign. So there's a lot of details in to how you arrive at these results that we will not talk about at all today. The work we generally do in our group is the hard work on paper so that the final results are easy for the computer. I've had to learn many times that computers are very good at very specific tasks, not very good at others. So the goal is always to reduce our expressions to linear algebra operations, Gaussian integrals, and pretty much that's it. So a lot of the work we do is the, the paperwork. And if you would like to talk about that, I would be more than happy to, but we won't look at most of the details today. So I understand that not everyone is so happy with looking at thousands of equations in a row. So instead, we'll look at some of the results that we computed. So the prototypical strongly correlated system in chemistry is hydrogen dissociation, in particular, more than one hydrogen, so like chains of hydrogen atoms. So uh, for Hartree, uh, sorry, for H4, the dissociation into four H atoms is a strongly correlated system. At the minimum, it's very easy, Hartree fog is correct. At dissociation, you have four independent uh, hydrogen atoms. The transition is difficult. Doki is pretty much exact. And we were hopeful that RG would be as well. Unfortunately, the ground state Richardson solution does not seem to be the same as Doki at all couplings. Near the minimum, it's pretty, pretty good because Hartree Fock is very good and RG is strictly better than Hartree Fock. And at dissociation, it was exact. We were very happy with that. In the middle, we have an avoided crossing between two different states. And that's a problem that we will have to fix. How are we going to fix it? By using more than one RG state. So we'll look at that quickly. As we go to bigger systems, this avoided crossing gets worse. So for H6, same behavior, except the avoided crossing is worse. And for H8, it's the same, but worse. So for all of these systems, we will have to look at more than one RG state. Or we will have to do some other things that I will not describe at all. Suffice it to say that in the next week or two, we will submit a preprint where we have much better curve. So in addition to hydrogen dissociations, which are seniority zero systems, we looked at dissociation of a nitrogen atom, a uh, nitrogen molecule into two nitrogen atoms, which is not a seniority zero system. Doki is definitely not exact. As you can see here, there's a huge gap between Doki and full CI. But RG is very close to Doki. So we were happy that RG reproduces Doki for the system, and it reproduced it fairly easily. There was no complicated business in the optimization. For that reason, we would consider RG a seniority zero starting point for nitrogen with some added things that we will have to do later to break pairs. So for seniority zero systems, we would say that we would have to work in a small expansion of RG states. For non-zero seniority systems, RG looks to be okay for Doki, and then we'll add in non-zero senioritys with some post-RG work that we'll consider in the future. So we will need more than one RG state. 
What does that mean? That means that we will have to solve the set of nonlinear equations for all the different states. We need to compute the transition matrix elements between uh, each state. And the result is easy. You get determinants of matrices that differ by small numbers of columns, but it's less clean than it was for one, for the diagonal case, let's say. Thankfully, there is an order, there is an alpha principle for the RG states that is that allows you to label states as ground plus singles, doubles, et cetera. Unfortunately, each RG state couples with each other RG state, meaning that you're going to have to approximate something somewhere. However, we were able to show that while the, there is non-zero coupling, numerically they tend to zero pretty quickly. So uh, for a small, very small system, two pairs and four sites, there are six states. And we looked at the one body transition elements that we're not going to plot. And the two pieces of the two body transition density matrix that you would need, diagonal piece D and the pair scattering piece P, the couplings uh, show the behavior that we want. Some of them are much more important than others. And in particular, the doubles for the pair scattering are less important than the singles. For the diagonal, they're also, they're more important than some of the singles. So that's unfortunate, but it's fine. If you look at a bigger system, so 10 sites with five pairs, the singles are by far the most important. The doubles are important, they're non-zero, and they contribute something important to the life function. Past that, triples, quadruples, quintuples contribute pretty much zero. So past singles and doubles, if you can truncate the, the wave function. You can truncate your excitation spectrum, say, and you're essentially not approximating anything. The, the overlaps between the ground state and triples, quadruples, pentuples is pretty much zero. Now, uh, for hartree fock it's beneficial to work in your molecular orbitals because there you have the, the good orthogonality rules that you want. We were curious to see if this happened in RG pairs as well. So we wrote everything in terms of the RG pairs. And unfortunately, it was not as clean, so we'll just brush past that quickly. But the point is that we can do the same sort of thing as for hartree fock Start from one RHF soda determinant, add in the excited states, and you have a short expansion for a weakly correlated system. For a strongly correlated scenario zero system, you start from RG and you systematically add in small excitations, and that will systematically improve your wave function until whatever whatever approximation of Doki that you want. This is not so expensive, and you can see this in our published papers. It eventually becomes Doki because it's a complete basis for the space. You will need to truncate your perturbation theories, but as we showed, the matrix elements go to zero anyway, and you can add weak, correlate, weak correlation post hoc, which is what we're gonna do. So we are building methods for strongly correlated systems using uh, exactly solvable models as a reference, in particular, Richardson and Godin pairs. These are variationally mean field feasible, meaning that you can compute everything you want with a cost that is very small, like under the fourth to evaluate the energy, for example. The optimization is a little tricky. You get a complete set of eigenvectors and everything is clean and easy to compute. In the near-term challenges, we have to decide how we're gonna guess our parameters. We haven't solved that. The optimization is a bit tricky. The transition density matrices are more expensive than they need to be. And of course, you need to optimize the orbitals for Doki to be perfect. So these are all near-term challenges that will be solved in the near term. So I would argue that this is a promising approach for strongly correlated systems. And the, the machinery that you would need to use these states is not difficult. It is only linear algebra and some not complicated things to build. So if you'd like to use them, please get in touch. I would be happy to work together. So a lot of uh, work was done by my students and uh, and CERC and the computing agencies in Quebec were very supportive as well. So thank you very much.